good. Yeah. Uh, winding down my long day. Yeah. Same. Long day. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. I mean, it... Wednesdays can tend to be long for me for some reason. I don't know, like, why, but... So. Yeah, for me, it's that stay late, middle of the day, work week kind of thing, and I yeah. really get home on time, so... Well, tonight we're going to have a fun little show. We're going to talk some OCS. We're going to talk some uh, about what's going on in Minnesota. and then. But first, we're going to start off with uh, Nationals. Uh, for those who were watching Nationals a couple... but It's, uh, it's been about a month now. Uh, we saw Charlie go 7-1. and one. Uh, You were undefeated going into the last game. So, I mean, let's, how does it feel going undefeated, like beating so many of the top players uh yeah it was it was uh definitely surreal for me i mean i i'm usually bubble boy so sorry about my dog but uh <laughs> yeah it, just that last game not having to play even because it all worked out perfectly the fact that i could just uh pitch my game to dennis so we could be mm -hmm. top two um and the last well the last three games, definitely toughest opponents, but I still had tough games, like Matt, uh, Lutz. And I played my mm -hmm. teammates what, twice, Matt and Mike. But uh, yeah, it was it was wild. Um, I played against OA a lot, so, and I, I kind of just nailed the head on the meta, so that helped. Yeah, let's talk That's about- feel good. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Like, we know we had Mike Kessling on last week, who, again, is your- teammate on Kessling's Drinking Buddies, but you seem to know, like, you had a really good grasp on the meta. You played map in OA, and you you hit the nail on the head playing map. Like, you were, like, a lot of the top players were playing OA. Like, was this something that you were thinking about for a long time, or was this, like, a late minute decision to play map? Um... It was definitely more of a late minute decision. I, the last minute decision. I, I think in the last, you can look at my logs. It was like a couple days before I was looking at map, and I had it partly built. Well, I had I had the the broken version built before it was nerfed, um, and so I realized you could just swap over a few cards with accelerates and put your episode ones back in. Mm -hmm. And put a couple, like, you know, Ellis and Latdam, and it just kind of like built itself almost. Like you had your Phasmas, your Hux, and all, all, all your first order characters, one of each of every EPP, and it built itself. And we were talking about old allies a lot, so I realized map kind of just decimated it. Like it. it you get ahead so quickly because there's um, because you can split up really fast and mm -hmm. you actually absorb some of their activation. And, uh, so like the couple of days before, I sent Dennis a message from like, hey, I think map's good still. I think I might play it. Uh, the, the other reason I played map is because I actually forgot a box of all my decks at home. <laughs> so I only brought map <laughs> and old allies. Like all my like I had ISB. I had my let the Wookiee win in there. Um, all, all, all of my pivots, pivot decks were in that box, and I left it at home. I texted my girlfriend. I'm like, "Hey, is there a box sitting in my op in the office?" She's like, "Yeah, do you want to see it?" And I'm like, "Yep, that's the one." So, I kind of was forced to play it, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, it's great against old allies, and I luckily mm -hmm. hit it three times. So, and so, what made you go with old allies in particular? If you knew that it was going to be a deck that was going to be popular, well. I got the inclination that no one was going to play map. Okay. So that's if no one's going to play map, I'm only going to play map. Then I'm going to play the best deck, right? My so the, the hour before I started nationals, you can ask like Brian Mishke and Kessling. Like I was running frantically between our our uh, hotel rooms trying to build let the Wookiee win because I <laughs> I felt like that would be the the way to go. Mm -hmm. But at the very last second, I realized I didn't have enough uh, council chamber pullers. 
So I just <laughs> switched back to old allies. And this was like, I even like, I was like, late. I was like, late. I'm like, okay, I'm just playing old allies. It's already built. And so it was, it was a mess. I didn't expect to, the, the outcome, honestly. Well, funny enough, because I actually brought uh, extra cards that I knew were like staples for a bunch of decks. I brought all my council chamber poolers. I brought my ca like an extra council chamber just in case somebody wanted to borrow them. So if you would have hit me up, you could have played your Let the Wookiee Win. Well, I mean, Chris Worse, I actually bumped into him in the hallway, and I'm like, hey, do you have any Anakin Skywalkers? He's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I think I bought a Luke, too. Like, so, and then I, I ended up not using him, but I just talked to the first person I saw trying to build that deck. But yeah, I, uh, I didn't play it, and it's probably... I still think it's a really good deck, but I, mm -hmm. old allies is old allies is just once they nerf court, it it can win almost every matchup. It's so resilient. So, mm -hmm. and it seemed like you went with like the uh, the same build uh, that a lot of people were playing with. Like, did you go with the the normal EPP ray, or did you go with just normal ray? No, I think the more I played it, I I I, I went one and one with mm -hmm. rays, but I I was like. The more I played it, I slowly was adding more control stuff in because I just felt like uh, um, the deck it it functions at its best form when you're playing it control and like those little changes, like playing like Ray with Stick, uh, Finn, and then like the Destiny Adders, and then like I think the Haze wasn't even playing like a second sight because he was like it was all about like it's like they call it the legend build of it. I just feel like it was it was too pigeonholed and like the deck really shines when you're running away and slowly bleeding them out of the game. So yeah. yeah, I I remember when I was building various decks from Nats and I looked at their builds and I started going with that build because it was something different. And the more I kind of looked and played, I was like, this doesn't feel like the old allies that I think is better. Like I thought your list from Nats was actually more for what OA does best, you know. It's not trying to replace Legend, it's trying to, you know, grind you out like Watcher Step mm -hmm. B used to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. Well, and I think I, I might have changed it at this point, but um, having one and one actually saved me in one game because I played against, like, a weird court where you, uh, Brandon, he, he pulled Arca okay. turn one, but he was also playing First Order ships in space, sort of. It was like Bow to the First Order and stuff. And uh, having Ray with Stick was really nice because I could you know, use Strike Plane to pull Leia and then get Ray with Stick turn one and just clear something. Mm -hmm. So it, it actually kind of... And then you can actually use your 2-0 to pull her out again. So. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're part of that team that went with four guys in the top eight. How did it feel for you knowing that you, like four of your teammates were in the top eight? It was great. It's awesome. It actually is crazy too because I played two of them. Like mm -hmm. I, I, in my run, I played two of them and they both made it. So, I mean, awesome. you only had half the field on your team, so right. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, obviously we were we were gonna get about four people in based on how many people we brought, but. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't think of a weak link really on your team anyway, so... Taco Bell. Uh, I was going to say, actually, probably Brian Fred, in all honesty, and that's just because he doesn't play enough anymore. Like, Yeah, I, I, he, yeah he, he's... If he played more, he would... Yeah. He's definitely... But, uh, yeah, there's... I don't think there really is. I think we have a good shot. Like, uh, coming up for Worlds, I have a lot of confidence in our team. Mm -hmm. um, and Dennis is like comes out of no I don't talk to him for two months and then he's like oh yeah I'm I've been playtesting a little bit um <laughs> Corey and Corey by the way won the consolation yeah so and uh you know I play I think we I think and honestly like playtesting for this tournament I playtested probably like four times with people and then I was just sitting at home with decks built playing against myself like figuring out lines mm -hmm. and uh and De but Dennis, like I don't see him play at all, and then he just crushes. So I always have confidence in him to to clutch. So yeah, it's it's gonna be good. I think Worlds will be good. And it kind of it kind of worked out for you guys because in the top eight matches in the the quarterfinals, essentially in the top eight, 
none of you guys played each other. Like, Matt uh, Lutz played Joe Olson, you played Hayes, Kessling paid Shannon, and Dennis B. Uh, Kyle. So that was kind of nice that you guys didn't have to go through each other to get to the semifinals and to the finals. Yeah, it was. It worked out perfect. Unfortunately, like there was like numerous series of unfortunate events that didn't pan out the way we we had hoped. You know, like uh, I like technically cheated and messed a few things up, and then <laughs> Dennis Dennis didn't get his deck list right, and he would have made it in a. Um, to the finals right? yeah he would have yeah. uh, i think he would have beat hayes to get into the finals against joe yeah so it, it's one of those things it's kind of like uh like when i play Star Wars, i feel like my late guy my like mid to late game has the most room for improvement because you're never mm -hmm. there right like like a lot of like when you play tests you don't play late game you don't like play test late game stuff you kind of play test early stuff and if you don't have a lot of experience with the late game, just like if you don't have a lot of experience with day two, uh, and the pressure and like this, getting enough sleep and stuff, there's all mm -hmm. kinds of different factors for day two that like, if you're not, if you haven't been there enough, it might hurt your chances. So. Yeah, yeah, that was actually one of the things I I tried to help everybody out with with the diff Texas Mini World last year, was just getting people used to that kind of grindiness that we don't get really in online. And, you know, it, it's a different animal when you go to day two. I mean, you've got to grind for every little point. It, it matters, you know. Um, you know, if, if Dennis had grinded out a little bit more, he, he still would have gotten past that, you know, deck list error to get to the finals. You know, there's little bits here and there that it all adds up and every bit matters, you know. And I'm sure Hayes probably used that to his advantage in the second game against him where... He grinded him down underneath that mm -hmm. you know cushion that he had right. uh, so you know it, it like you said it, it's rough for newer players um and but you know it's good that you guys all got that experience you know and they're getting that experience more and more you know guys like matt lutz who i've probably known was going to be good for a couple years now like uh you know he probably hasn't played that kind of situation as much as you know, someone like you or um, Brian or, you know, those guys from Minnesota that have been in top eights before or even, um, you know, Joe or Hayes who have been doing it for years. So, you know, it puts you guys at an underdog to get there. For but, sure. So, like, you're re you know, you're still relatively new to the game. Is that, cr is that wrong? Or, I like, how long have you been playing, Charlie? Uh, I, I've been playing at least five years yeah. well, no, I, 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 so I, I played it a bunch in high school and then I quit for a while in college and then I came back and then I quit again and then I came back can't really I mean consistently I've been playing for yeah something like that five five or six years mm -hmm. I was going to so, say because you were at that that world I think I ran at the Dagobah Hotel I think you were there. I think you yeah. guys came over with John. Yeah. I haven't um, missed a, I haven't missed a Worlds in a while. Like I, I, yeah. I think I, I've, I went to Boston. That was like my first Worlds. So, okay. Dang. Whatever year Boston and was. You, you didn't you top eight of Worlds? I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's why when you're like, you know, he's still new. I was like, he's top eight at Worlds. I thought so. Well, <laughs> can't I, be new yeah. anymore in top eight Worlds. Uh, I was going to say, like, I know I was talking to uh, Mark Walseth, who I'm, I'm assuming that's who you went and played with through high school and everything. Was that? Yeah. Uh, he, I he was taught, like, he taught me. I want to say, like, I was talking to him, and I would go, Charlie seems like he's older. He goes, no, Charlie's still young. <laughs> like, are, how old do you think Charlie is? And I go, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm 32. Yeah, I mean, that's still kind of young. Like compared to a lot yeah, of the players, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, a lot of us have been playing since Decipher owned the license, and yeah, you know, Decipher owned the license. You know, some of us were in high school or getting out of high school, and it was like, holy crap, uh, we've been playing this a long time. Then you got. I do. Uh, I was gonna say I do remember uh, uh, having my my mom drive me to uh, games sort of buy a box of Feed Palace. So. <laughs> 
I, I did, I that was playing slightly, but I, I, I was, it, the thing is like, it's weird, it's like, uh, now I take it a lot more competitively back then. It, mm -hmm. I love Walseth and he taught me everything, he's an amazing teacher, but he also is very like, gank oriented. So it, like, we, we always were trying to figure out the best way to like, trick your opponent versus like, the best way to win. Mm -hmm. uh, is how I look at the game now, right? So it's a little bit different, and I think you're a lot more successful if you you look at the game from like, um, you know, you're playing odds in like what matchups you're gonna see, and you're playing as high tier deck you can, and it's mm -hmm. not like, uh, you know, I'm gonna play Sith Fury four times in the game. Sort of thing. Uh, well, Johnny Chu has done that. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's an exception. Well, I can't. <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> speaking of Johnny. Uh... I guess there was a tournament out in Minnesota recently, very recently, and Johnny was there. Yeah, were you last at the... weekend, he was there. Were, I was were there. you there? Yeah. Yeah. Did his he... kids. He has... Did he bring his kids with him? They played, yeah. Oh, they played. Oh, God, no. That's not good. Yeah, it, it was a non-virtual, but Shields. Virtual Shields, too. So it was like, uh, you know, everyone's playing like Darth Maul and mm. Huntry Falcon and that net and stuff like that how, how did you how did you do with that tournament uh i got second place and johnny chu got third place and whoa who, corey, who? Won. Corey, won. corey won corey won corey yeah. won yeah wow corey won. was so, it was it diff or sos i think it was sos but he was the only undefeated and it was a four game tournament uh, so. okay. yeah i remember his four games that's why i was curious if it was diff or sos so yeah, it was. SOS. So how did it feel to get back to playing in person Star Wars? Like you've been playing a lot online in the last uh, year and a half, to almost two years now. So did it? it, it it's awesome. It's way better. <laughs> I hundred percent prefer playing uh, live, uh, but it was strange, kind of because. Uh, when you play on GIMP for so long, there's a lot of... It's not necessarily that I was, like, forgetting, um, you know, like, hunt down, visage damage or something, but mm -hmm. there's little things that... One of the biggest things to me is that on GIMP, you have cues, right? Like, I have deploy phase, and anything I can use is highlighted. So it's really hard to forget things on GIMP. And you yeah. don't get that at all, obviously, live, so... Forgetting things is like, it's like a big barrier to success almost because mm -hmm. there's, there's little things, especially if you're playing new stuff, because new, 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 new objectives, uh, generally have more things going on. So you yeah. have to remember all these little things, but I, I, I was, it was great. I mean, I, I loved it. Amazing playing live versus playing GEM. And I, I like GEM. Don't get me wrong. It's fine alternative but live 100 percent all day and did you mess up did you mess up any power calculations in battles i mean there's a couple of times where i looked at my opponent i'm like all right what was the power again you know like let's count it up again mm -hmm. 26 to 24 what was the forfeit i yeah, want to say that's that's a great thing about it now, did, I want to say you did that. You talk. Like, I'm sitting there watching you guys. It was you and Hayes in the top eight match, and you guys were talking like that. Like it seemed like you guys were going back and forth. Like, what's my power? Do we got to add it up again? How do we do math? Yeah, like, it, was, it, it was. It was like a battle on uh, on the beach. No idea versus Shadow Collective, and he obviously has like 40 plus power, and I had like Jabba, and I doubled Chalk's power, and like we had a just. It was like 30, 30 to 40, so I don't know, whatever. It was super <laughs> high, so. So, but let's go back to, like, talking about uh, online. So, in June, it, it was, a, what, May and June, because we didn't have an OCS last month. You went 23-1. and one. That's pretty amazing right there. Like, what, what, how did you get on such a hot streak? Uh... Good question. I mean, I I played both. I typically play at the end because I've mm -hmm. I've been a procrastinator my whole life, you know. And uh, 
I'll, also, I just like watching games. Like, I really like watching good games. I, I get really excited when I know two good players are playing. Like, and so, a lot of times, there's <laughs> these top players. They all play at different times. You mm -hmm. know, like I think usually I think like Joel Olson play get gets his games in early versus like someone yeah. else gets their games in late. Um, uh, the first my eleven and one run, I kind of spread them out. I played MHT once, and I I don't remember a lot of the games, but. Um, I just pick the best deck I don't have to think too much with, and then I just pump them out. But like the last day, I think on both times, I try to I had to get as many games as possible. I did not expect. <laughs> I think okay, so this is a funny story. Uh, when I qualified, I had to get a game in, but I went golfing right the day that they, I had to get a game in, and I was like, I'm not gonna not go golfing if I don't qualify. Whatever. So I went golfing. And I think I had like four, three or four hours because it ends at like 6 p.m. my time. Mm -hmm. So I get in the car, someone else is driving, and I actually loaded a game off of my phone, like a, a table on my phone, just to hope someone grabs it. And uh, I think uh, Matt Wadden grabbed it. Okay. And uh, and so we're driving home, and I, I can't use Bow on my phone. Like, it won't let me use Bow to the first order because it's playing Map. I have my iPad with me, so I turned my phone into a hotspot and connected with my iPad, and then we went to Dairy Queen, right? And I got a Dairy Queen Blizzard, and I sit there, and I got my iPad, and I'm playing Jim on my iPad on a drive home against Matt, and I'm like, you know, I'm making mistakes, so I'm sitting in the car eating a, an Oreo Blizzard, and then, like, as soon as I get home, I'm like, can't talk to my girlfriend, I'm like, can't talk, gotta go play a game. So I run up to my computer, where I'm now, and then I swap over to my computer and I finish the game. I actually won, which was crazy. I did not expect to win, but <laughs> yeah, it was wild. That was my last game to qualify. Yeah, I remember yeah. you were. We were all wondering if you're gonna be able to squeak it in yeah. under the time limit because we were going. He's not even on. He hasn't set up a game. He's got <laughs> yeah. like an hour left. <laughs> What's gonna happen? And then you squeaked it in and. And they even pulled it out. I, I mean, of course, we don't know what's going on with all the uh, the iPad and iPhone or shenanigans that you're right. having to do. Like, we don't know all that. We're just like, oh, he got he's starting his game. Oh crap! Let's all watch. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the real crazy. question is, how'd you do in uh, playing golf? Uh, I think I not well. It was, <laughs> I, it was like I always start well and then I get frustrated at some point. You know, it was okay. Hot, like the mid nineties. It's, it's funny because I know uh, there's people who are going to Worlds who are we're talking about bringing our clubs. Are you going to do that if you go? Mm, probably not. I, I have rented clubs before. I don't really mind renting clubs, so I could do that. But if I do go, I'd rent them. It'd so, be fun, though. Yeah. So let's talk about your undefeated month. How did it feel going undefeated? Like, and Was that the month that you qualified, or was that... June. No, I, I actually knocked uh, I knocked Silver Glen out for that, and I that was also I think I got six games in the last day. <laughs> like I, I played like a madman the last day, just got kept it. playing and playing and playing. And then, like you know, and, and no offense to people, but sometimes like I played Chris Kelly and he got frustrated. He's just trying to get games in, and then so he just conceded one game, right? And so mm -hmm. then I played. Now like okay, I, I might make it now. Because that's another game under my belt, and I just keep loading games up with like a quick deck that I know is good. Yeah, yeah. kind of happened. So. You got to get those foils. That's what it comes down to, right? Yeah, I missed. I, the I think I only played like four games the first month. I strip all my stuff to Brian Fred or Chris Kelly. So stop, stop sending stuff to Chris Kelly. He doesn't need it. They they're building me decks so I can play this game. I'll build you decks. So uh, we mentioned worlds a little bit. So are you planning on going to worlds? Yeah, I already have a plane ticket. So I think we got Ryan Mishki is going and playing. That's awesome. Ooh, that's good. Uh, Dennis and Sam is going. Okay. Matt is going. Yeah, I believe as well. Is and Mark we're trying to convince Walsa? His okay. girlfriend is actually going to be 
the biggest factor. He's like, I'm going to try to convince him to go. And I think they had a lot of fun at Denver, so. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hopefully it was... They come. It, she was a blast. Like, she was helping out with everything, like, cutting up, like, the foils to give out. Uh, she, yeah, like... She's into the game, too. She she watches it, and she likes it, so... Is she gonna play? Uh... I don't know. I don't... I don't know. Maybe. Did, Hopefully yeah, the yeah. team event, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Get Mark and her to play. So... Right now, uh, we know that a new V set is coming out. Is there? How do you feel about the meta right now, though? Before this next set drops. Um. How do I feel with the meta? Uh, I like the meta. I think it's good. It's a little rock paper scissorsy. Um. But I think it's. There's nothing. To. Um. Restrictive. Because, like, old allies is good, but, like, there's certain decks that have a big touch of course is pretty good against it. Um, Rigging before me can beat it if you play the right stuff, like Grand Admiral Thrawn and V and play right. So I, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm excited to see what the meta brings. It. <clears throat> I don't know how you guys feel about this, but, like, the fact that... I would say, technically, Nationals is, like, a new meta, right? Kind mm -hmm. of. And then Worlds is going to be a new meta, too. And it's... I mean, it, when you keep adding new sets, every... Some people are great at coming up with new ideas, and some people are great at, like, playing fleshed-out ideas. So I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. yeah I, I'm better at playing the fleshed-out ideas, so I'm definitely on the... You know, okay, it's a month out. That's not a lot of time for me to, you know, figure things out. But, you know, I know some people are a lot better at that, and... You know, it pay like it rewards them for being good at that. That is a skill to have. So, you yeah. know, I I also just would rather shake things up more often. I think since we're seeing Gelp kind of solve things for us quicker with all the OCS. You know, if they drop the new set before the September OCS, that will give a month's worth of games. Like you were saying, I like to watch mm -hmm. games too. So. Being able to sit there and watch those games would be kind of nice to... You'll see some of that meta being developed as people start figuring things out. Like, the OCS is actually still getting people to play their better stuff, you know. They're not going to hide it all the time. Right. So. Yeah, and the more people play, too, the more that... I, I, I think the meta got pretty figured out pretty quick. Um, and if... Set 16 is anything like set 15 then I think it's a pretty in a good pretty good place because like 15 really only, only introduced a few things that sh changed mm -hmm. meddled with the meta like Blizzard 8 and uh, um, like the, I'd say the Erratos had more of an impact yeah uh, for right. sure um, but if it's anything like that and they don't add too much it's it'll be it'll be fine like it, it's not gonna I heard something about community. I think that's like a, mm -hmm. a revealed thing. So like, community isn't s blow everything out of the water. Then, yeah. and there's just a few little tweaks and adds. Maybe make like AOBs more relevant or something. I don't know. Whatever it is, I, I haven't seen any cards, so I'm not playtest. Yeah, I don't know. Should be alright. Yeah, I would yeah. like to see kind of light side get some decks kind of brought back up to, you know, like you were saying, it feels very RPS-y right now, um, where you are you choose the light side and you're like, okay, I can beat this and this for dark, but I have to kind of dodge this for dark. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be kind of nice if they could bring up some of that stuff to where you don't have to feel like you have to dodge decks just to do well, because um, that's always a bad feeling at Worlds, is having to dodge decks just so you can... Yeah, you know, run good, and that's that's not a good feeling, especially right. when it's eight games. Well, I know a couple of weeks ago when we had Hayes on. He said commuting was one of the new things that they were introducing, or bringing it back, and he also brought up that we're getting a dark side scarif type of a deck. So maybe that will quell some of the no ideas that we saw from like nationals, because I mean, like I said, like I want to say it was Mike and Worf's last week who said it. No idea is more of the gonna stack one site stack in space 
use menace phase to slow you down and then just spread out to your not battlegrounds and just do a little bit of drains here and there. Well, they're like the ISB of light side. Yeah. Without the you know minus one to four strain, but they cancel all your bonuses because of menace fades. Yeah. So kind of balances out, I guess. But you know they they drop that yeah. huge stack of guys that you just are looking at going. I can't over really power this, and mm -hmm. your weapons don't really work on them as well. And with SC being popular in the meta right now, trying to shoot it makes it a little bit rougher. Yeah. Right. Uh. It's interesting because we are kind of like in a stack meta and figuring out you ways couple, to... You have a couple of visitors. <laughs> yeah, that's Peyton <laughs> and my dog. Um, hi, Peyton. We're having a few things. So, so I think uh, stack meta is okay as long as you can punish it, right? Like Yeah. Before it was like like the like defensive shields did that, right? Before before you could like um, rose BB8, ping damage, just sit on a site or like do something. Um, there were other ways you could you were punishing it because you couldn't just I mean battle order for strike or battle order battle plan is kind of a way um, you got like uh, powered and stuff like that. But um, that's why shadow Col I like shadow collective because it it does punish kind of us. Like, if you go play against mains, one of your a valid strategies is to kind of go wide on them, especially because you start the, the gick effect. So, like, you can go wide and push just as much damage and uh, kind of hit them back wherever. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like that. I like that they made that more relevant. I think Brock and uh, Danik Jericho are Danik. So, yeah. They're, they're yeah. Additions to the deck. And, um,. Yeah, I, I just, uh, as long as they don't, like, no idea versus ISB is, like, um, a layer of hell to me. So is OA versus ISB. Like, I, I, I can't stand those matchups. I think the less you keep, and I, I, I mean, I've been mm -hmm. one, I've abused it in the past, right? I've played ISB. I've, I've played it. I had a game against Tom Kelly that, in, in uh, MPC a while ago, that was just, like, but, like, as long as you kind of keep that out of the meta, it makes it healthier, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, there was that there was that post in Slack the other day. I forget. I think it was Phil um, that posted it, where he was talking about, you know, the light side versions of ISB and ROPS. They get slapped down all the time, and then ISB and ROPS are kind of just brought back. And you know, it's yeah. that I want to play with Imperials and Star Destroyers kind of stuff, and that's what those two decks do, but God, playing against them is the worst. Could be worse. I no. love ROPS as a as a, as a, as a concept, but uh, and I think it's probably in the place it should be. Even though I maybe could see it being a little stronger, but like if if it's just a little stronger, it's too good. Yeah. Like yep. it's so tricky to balance that deck, but I love the idea of it being able to just like put characters all over the board you know it's great mm -hmm. but yeah it's just uh, tricky yeah. so really quick we did talk about a little bit about this uh worlds again is coming up in less two than two months less than two months yeah uh, just under the two month window why it's doing yeah i'm pumped it's gonna be great yeah I'm looking forward to it, you know, doing the touristy stuff, riding at the Capitol, that kind of stuff is going to be really fun. Yeah, so make sure you follow the forums about it. We're going to have a throwback event. we got the prize listed, so it's all for that. All the prize are, prizes are listed. Uh, the hotel link is live, so if you're planning on staying at that hotel, go ahead and make sure you click on that link. But again, Worlds, October uh, 7th through 7th the 10th. Through 10th. And then also right now, the uh, stream team, uh, we are currently looking for volunteers, uh, people who want to volunteer with commentary, as well as being a co-host on Hollow Theater. So we're currently looking for uh, anyone who's willing to give up some of their time to get in front of the camera, work behind the camera, and uh, help us out. Also, as someone who has done this, it's 
it's fun. You get to go hang out with everybody. There's less stress involved doing commentary than there is playing. You get yep. to kind of just relax and take it easy. You're not having to worry about the Friday night. Oh, crap, it's 2 a.m. I don't think this card's very good in my deck, and I'm worried about seeing X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got to get up and make changes at 6 a.m. or, you know, things like that. You just get to relax, enjoy your time, talk about Star Wars for 10 hours on Saturday and, you know, eight hours on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, and you get you get all the uh, the prize. You get some pr cool prize support as well as helping out. And the other thing is, uh, you don't have to worry about those Saturday night. Like it, while the top eight is all like, oh man, what am I going to do for decks and everything? Well, you get to sit around and play all the board games. I mean, honestly, I was going to ask Charlie this. How, how do you feel about the new top eight where we don't know the matchups ahead of time? Like, did that make your Saturday night easier? Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, uh, you kind of. So, uh, our my strategy was we were talking about it because we had two and two, and uh, I decided just to kind of tech. I didn't even really tech for for Hayes and Hayes and uh, Kyle. I think were the other two. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't really attack for them, but I kind of like went in with expectations of decks they played and didn't really think about my teammates so much. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did not. Because like I only play, I played old allies, and then our Shadow Collective, we changed two or three cards. So um, it was like we added Zuckus and Enforce Bush, something like that. So, But yeah, it, it, it's better. I think it's 100% better. Awesome. So. Okay, on. On top of that, uh, if you're looking for some new primers that are out there, well, Matt Lutz recently came out and did a primer for Profit. Uh, he played Profit both day one and day two at Nationals, so he kind of know has an idea of what's going on with the de with the deck. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, also, we have a few more of the deck lists that were from uh, the in-person deck lists. So should have also a little... Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, it should have almost all those decks on the forum somewhere, so on the website. Um, I was going to add, if you want to write a primer, please reach out to Jared. Uh, what is his last name? I just know him as JNAP. Uh, Jared Napolitano. <laughs> there you go. Um, reach out to him, uh, JNAP on Slack, and I think the forums as well. Or Yeah, JNAP yeah. Elite 31 on the forums. He's the red guy in red. Uh, reach out to him if you have any interest in writing any primers. Um, primers are always something in need, and yeah. they really do help, you know, bring the community together, and they add a lot of value to the community. So if you want to write one, please do. Yeah. And then checking up on our OCS standings for this month, currently we have three players sitting at 9-3. and three. Uh, Pat Johnson, uh, that guy we were just talking about, Jared Napolitano, and uh, Timo Dussel all sitting at 9-3. and three. But all of them have to watch out because Drew Lichtenstein is currently sitting at eight and one. So Drew, member of that uh, team of nine million people, currently sitting at eight and one. So uh, I think he was he played uh, earlier today. So and I want to say he played the uh, the rescue the princess V. And he won with it. So yeah, true. You guys got a hell of a team. <laughs> We've been messing with that deck for so long. I, You know, I want to see a good version of that deck. I really do. It just seems fun. It is really fun to play. For sure. I really like 3PO, and I would try to find yeah. a use him in, in multiple decks. I Quiet think it's, Money Colony. Well, I mean, his activation decks is really good for those, like, oh, yeah. I'm going to blow you out because of First Strike. No, I can no. activate. Play yeah. him in uh, Hitco. Plop him down at that uh, the Death Star 2 site. I mean, you can't play 3PO with his parts showing in that deck. Problem with hit, the problem with him and Hitko is that you never, like... I mean, generally, you don't proactively put that 2-2 down. So, mm. like, to, to activate him, to go there... And then, it, like, if you're not going to put it down and put it, and you have him in your hand, it's like, do I put him to another site just to get the activation text and not get yeah. damage? It's a lot more awkward, whereas, like, Rest of the Princess, it's like, I have two pullers in my deck. Like, I want to get him out as soon as possible because I 
can I have like yeah you know like all kinds of sevens that I just can throw back into my deck and track. So like he's amazing in that deck. Seven. And then like QMC is good too. He's yeah. just a little bit fluffy in QMC. Like he he's just another another card that like you know he, he needs to be on the table two turns. Yeah. And he does nothing for board control. You know to get value out of him to do some damage right because it's mm -hmm. cost you one so like it's good it's just i i thought it was a lot better than qmc was like on a table for us for nationals and i just always get in the same quagmire with qmc it's like there's a certain point in the game where I'm like i have to do so much more work yeah the opponent you know like <laughs> I don't, uh... yep that's how you play qmc is you get to turn five and you're like all right, I've got to do a thousand things just to get back in this game. I can do them all, but I have to do them. Yeah. yeah. Been there before. Okay, so let's yeah. talk, let's do some swing and a miss, gentlemen. Okay, so we're going to talk... Sure. So our first question of the night. Someone from Minnesota will make the top eight at Worlds. Uh, let's start with Charlie. Yeah, you know, it's a hit for sure. That's the that means yes, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna make yeah, we're gonna make it. Yeah. Who do you think? Who do I think? I, I, at least one of us. At least, at least one. Least. Who do you think it's gonna yes. be? I I don't know. Well, I mean, I'll you said me. I have confidence in myself. <laughs> okay, there there we sure. go. So one and potentially more. I have yeah. confidence in all of us, to be honest. Um, so I. I yeah, I, I I think we get two. I would say two for sure. Okay. I think Matt can make it. Dennis, Brian, if he practices. <laughs> I want Corey. I think might be or is going. And if he played not goofy decks, I think he has a shot too. Yeah. So. I'll and tell you. Walseth actually, Walseth actually had a shot too to get mm -hmm. to top eight last time. Yeah. Or he knocked him out. Yep. Which he was very hard on himself for that. He, he did top eight one as well. He has top eight ones, yeah. So yeah, we have a great shot. I, yeah. Okay, Robbie. Yeah, I mean, I wrote the question, and I I would say <laughs> yes. Um, I would put the over under at like one point four, maybe. One point four. Um, yeah, because I I think they have a good shot at getting two in. It. Uh, like it depends on matchups it depends on runs and everything like that like it always does but i mean i could see charlie i could you know charlie's top eight in worlds and he's coming off of you know that hell of a ocs run you know finished seven and one at nats there's mm -hmm. yeah i wouldn't bet against charlie uh i've always thought matt has been an up-and-coming player wouldn't bet against matt to pull it off uh brian's you know finished second at worlds in another country so i mean that's <laughs> You. True. We got to deal with the uh, jet lag over there, so that's not easy to do. And he finished second there. Um, I could see him coming back and doing it. And then you know they have a lot of guys like Mark who could do it. Corey could do it. Yeah. You know, there's there's Sam, not any. Sam's good too. I was, Sam's I was gonna good. even say Sam. Like I could see Sam making a run. Um, you know, it's knowing your decks. It's knowing the meta. It's making the you know, making the best plays to give you the best chance. And, you know, I think all those kids that, you know, used to come with Mark to these events are figuring that stuff out that, you know, some of us veteran guys have always, you know, have known from playing, you know, these games for 15 years is you have to give yourself the best chance to do the best you can. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say hit as well. I think and no offense to anybody the person i'm looking at is dennis uh dennis played well over in germany and it was like an early tournament for him i think he could have actually done really well at nationals if he didn't have that deck list error so he just needs to practice more he needs to write his deck list out correct yeah yeah he and also even like i with that mistake too like the first game, if we would have just had a con like we didn't have a long enough conversation or play test against that deck, but like I told him I'm like, you have Tana, just go to Death Star, but don't go too early. Like if you would have just pushed damage and gotten late to Death Star, he would have won that game. And it wouldn't matter. Yeah. He would have won both sides. So 
Yeah, okay. he definitely, definitely is shot at top eight. Yeah. No question. Okay, question number two. Minnesota is no longer the heart and soul of Star Wars CCG. Robbie, let's start with you, because this is one of your questions, I believe. Yeah, this was me poking fun with Charlie and the guys up there. I, you know, we had like, what was it, three or four regions a while back with you, Indoor, and there were, I guess, a couple East Coast and maybe like the SoCal yeah. guys where everybody was trying to say we're, we're kind of where it's at, and I always was right there with Minnesota and what Mark was doing to promote the game, so I had to throw this question out there just because it's been you know a weird couple of years now a year and a half now whatever it is mm -hmm. and with school no longer being there and i'm sure mark's had to like push back on his program at school a little bit since we can't always get together and play so i just wanted to throw it out there as a, just a joke but i mean i don't think there's any one place really that's the heart and soul but minnesota is a great group of guys that you know I would happily go to and have an event there. Like they, they're good guys to go and play yeah. an event there. They deserve it. So I guess that would be. That's a mess. A miss. You said the swing, uh, swing and a miss. Uh, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear what um, you're going to say. I think that it MN is no longer the heart and soul of Star Wars. I would say that's accurate to a degree because would that be it's a miss or no that's a yeah hit. that's a swing and a miss a hit well right. no if it's accurate oh, yeah it's yeah a hit. yeah right. okay you're right you're and right I, not not because like okay so i we have been going to events consistently for like half a decade all of us right and like we we keep each other honest we try hey man let's go to this let's, let's keep mm -hmm. going let's try to go um and that's true of a lot of different like Seattle is also mm -hmm. awesome when it comes to that like they go to a ton of stuff and um it's like my favorite event to go to when it, whenever there's an event out there um but I would say the heart and soul is like slack now. like we everything is happening on slack right like I, I don't I, I think it's too spread out at this point yeah before it was like the whole the Minnesota stuff like we have like the the Star Wars school program and stuff and it just keeps taking a beating in, in different different ways um, you know external factors we can't really control yeah so, yeah I'd say I'd say it's kind of gone away from that I don't really like being the heart and soul of it I like the community, like as a whole. I don't like being like oh. the center of it. I like. I, w I would also say, everybody. like, with, to your point of Slack, and it's something I didn't think of. With COVID, we kind of changed how our community interacts. You know, we're not True. just always in person and everything. We've had to adapt and, you know, come together online more. And so, you know, we don't really have those geographical you know barriers anymore and you know you can see by like charlie's team of nine thousand guys that he's on <laughs> you know they're all over the country you know hell drew was in china for a little bit so yeah you know it, it's definitely changed you, you're forgetting one point though robbie no. world championships out in seattle what? the world champion is out in seattle right now so that's where the heart and soul is Oh, cool. yeah. I thought you were yeah. trying to say Worlds was in Seattle. I was no. like, no, that's in DC. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm messing. No, I, I agree. I think it's more. It was a hermit. Like, he doesn't count. No, I know. Yes. I, I honestly, I thought I think it's more of like you're right though. You touched upon it. It's more of an online presence at this point, and when we get together, it just, yeah. And well, and then um, we had Worlds here once, and it was yeah. fun. But I love an excuse to travel so I honestly feel like I think I talked about this with some other guys it's like it feels more like Star Wars events to me when I travel versus when it's at home yeah so and it's tougher too because like so many people are concentrated in like the east coast so 
I don't really mind going out there. I mean, we've we carpooled twice, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that must be nice. I, I, I think my drive out of the state of Texas would be like y'all's drive to the East Coast. <laughs> Okay, yeah, question yeah. number three. Map will still be a good option for worlds. Uh, yes. I think so. Okay. I think map's always on the table. I know people dog on it for some reason, but um, the only reason it's kind of weak right now is because it has iffy matchups against fringe decks that yeah. only play space. Like, Otherwise, it's just as good as it's ever been. I mean, it. no, that's not true. It's been a lot better. It's been broken, but it's in a good spot. It's in a healthy spot, and it's definitely relevant. So I would say that it's a hit. I think I would go with swing and a miss, only because I think there's more options for dark side. Like, if map was a light side deck, I think map would be great. But it's competing against, you know, ISB. It's competing against, um, you know, SC. It's competing against even that Bring Them Before Me deck, which I think is a solid option, too. No. It's got a lot of competition. You know, I guess that means it's a good option still because it's competing with them. But, you know, I, I think the other ones might be a little bit better. So I think, I, like, if I was given an option for Worlds, I don't know if I would play map. I think I'd be looking at one of the other decks. I mean, so I think I think you, you. We talked about this earlier, though. With the new set coming out, people are going to either gravitate towards what they know and just tweak what they know towards the new meta, or steer towards what's new with this new set. So, I, I think with map, I think it, it's going to be strictly depending on if people think OA is going to be still an option, because it's really good against OA. I mean. We saw how it did. That being said, uh, I don't know. Dark side does have way more options than Star or White side right now. So, uh, personally, I'd probably be playing ISB just because I know ISB. Now, that's not to say, like, set your course isn't good. Map's not good. Uh, dark deal with all the vehicles isn't good. So, I, I think Dark side does have a lot more options. So... Like, if I had to rate it, you know, the tier system of tier 1, 1. 1.5, I'd yeah. probably put it, like, 1.6, 1.7. So, like, it's still good, but I think other things have kind of passed it or are a little bit better. So, I'm not sure which one that actually goes. But yeah. Well, yeah. and then you have you have no idea what, what the set's going to bring. Right. So, it could exactly. completely change stuff. Um, right. Yeah. I don't think it will. I think they've been really cautious about uh, breaking anything? Yeah, I don't think they'll release anything broken, but I think set 16 will shake things up a little bit. Yes. You know, like set 15, we did get a couple of key cards, like you're saying, like the Blizzard Walker, um, and then Runk and Danik, Danik, whatever. And yeah. you know, like those two really helped SC come back and put a put itself on the map. So, you know, I think we'll get a few good cards out of it, and we'll see what they do with commuting. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say, but you know, it'll be interesting to see what they release. Yeah. Since I I haven't seen anything. That's fair. Okay, last question of the night: A nine and three player will qualify for the OCS this month. Robbie, let's start with you, sir. Um, looking at the league as it is, we still have a lot of people that haven't played. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think Drew's going to qualify and knock one of the 9-3s down, but it could extend to the top three based on who gets that second spot. So, yeah. um, you know, actually, I'll just say it's a miss. Like, I, I, I think somebody else will come out and make a run like Drew, like maybe even Baroni. Baroni was 4-1. You know, he could get to 10-2 and, and knock yeah. some, one of the 9-3s out. So, no, I think it'll be a miss. Uh, it's really hard to qualify with a nine and three month. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a miss. I mean, Kevin Shannon's three and zero right now. Yeah. Right? Like. 
Yeah, well, but he'll time out. He'll time he'll out. Him. And the other thing is, I mean, one of his wins against Scott. Come on. Scott's been playing Mind What You Have Learned this month. That's that's the OCS, man. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's what it is. I mean, I, you know, there's certain people that I don't think they've ever had above a 34% win rate of opponents, right? Oh. To, and they qualify you're... every <laughs> year, every time. Yeah. So that's just how it works, right? Like, um, so I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think nine three will make it. I think it's gonna be. There's so many people I haven't played, and we, we're only eleven days in. So. Yeah. My my head's telling me no, but my heart's telling me I hope. Just because Pat is one of my friends. I mean, I'm not saying, like, nobody, there's aren't, like, a lot of people who are my friends, but I'm just saying, Pat's one of my closest testing partners. So, it would be nice to see him make it, but, yeah, 9-3 is going to be really, really <laughs> rough. Yeah, it's going to be tough for 9-3. It usually is, I mean. Yeah. There's so many people playing games, it's hard to not have at least one or two of them go 10-2. Mm-hmm. Or okay. better. Okay, so that's all we have for Swing and the Miss. Really quick, before we get into our lore challenge, uh, again, this month's deck building challenge is to just play two of the decks from the top eight from Nationals. You need a light side and a dark side. It's all you got to do. Nobody's entered. And it's... M what do I got to do to make a fun challenge for people to, to, for people to enter? I don't What's know. the challenge? Play, play a light decks side... From Nats. Yeah, just play and win with two decks from Nationals. Like you could literally play your decks right now, Charlie. Win, and you're into the challenge. You're qualified for the challenge. Okay. That's it. Okay. What do you? What like? if he thinks his decks are bad? Yeah. I, I'm not, I've never participated, so I don't really. You win one of those uh, foil. You know the, the packs I gave out, the little plastic things. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, you're gonna win one of those. So I can just play OCS games with. It doesn't have to be OCS. It could be an open series. It could be a Jawa match. As long as it's a league. That's all you gotta do. Alright. Okay. Are you ready for your lore challenge, uh, Charlie? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna read it out to you, and then you get to decide if you want the set or the type of the card. The set or the type of the Okay. Uh, wait, so you're gonna read it out, and then... Okay, sure. Yeah. So, the lore is, R2-D2, you know better than to trust a strange computer. Sorry, what were my choices again? Type of card and set? Set. You know better than to trust a strange computer. Uh, set... So I pick a set. So no, no. I'm gonna so so say if you want the set, I give you what set it's from, or if you want the type, I give you the type of the card. Uh, well, I think I know what set it is. So give me type of card. It's an interrupt. Okay. Uh, I'm just guess. Side. It's got to be light side, right? I can't help you if I wanted to. Is it? Um, I'm just gonna guess. Is it like uh, Freud shutdown? Is that is that the light side version? That was the dark side. Yeah, that's the dark side. All, all switch off? Is that... That's also dark that's side. That's dark side. What, what card am I thinking of? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't know I there was know. a light I side. I have one. no idea. I have no idea what card it is. Is it from Bespin? Or uh, Cloud City? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Shocking, inf so shocking information. Yeah, that makes sense. I was going to say, I think it has a picture of R2 sticking his 
you know, that little thing out to interface with the computer right. on it. Yep. And that's all I knew. I, I couldn't tell you what the card was. Man, I never look at lore. Yeah, barely yeah. ever. <clears throat> well, I mean, looking at lore is half the fun. Okay, everyone. Well, that's all we have for tonight. Uh, again, I want to thank Charlie for coming on as our guest host. Robbie, thank you for coming on as the co-host. Uh, that's all we have for the Hollow Theater. So until next week, we're going to try and get Dennis Reinhardt, a uh, fellow member of Team 9 Million, as, and uh, the other guy who went 7-1. and one. So we're going to try and get Dennis Reinhardt on next week. Uh Always stay tuned to the forums, to Slack, to Discord for any more information regarding Star Wars. And until then, everyone have a good night and uh, have a good week. See you next Wednesday, everybody. Yeah.